Delia Harper has the kind of spontaneous warm smile that can light up a room and put anyone at ease. Don't let us see your cards. We might be tempted to cheat. <laughs> In her role at Bridgehaven Mental Health Center, Nelia offers members support and affirmation every chance she gets. Well, that's great. I know that helps a lot. Sounds like it helps a lot. Yes. yes. She knows the value of that support because Nelia herself has a mental illness. Though in recovery now, her road has been challenging. And my high school life was really grand, pretty much, compared to an outsider looking in. I was junior class vice president, Miss Junior, Miss Senior, Senior Basketball Homecoming Queen. I was on the student council. I was voted Senior Best Dressed Girl. I was in band for two years in the marching band, and I even received five scholarships to enter college. Shortly after entering college, she began to experience unsettling thoughts and feelings. I started feeling really depressed, and I didn't know that I was depressed. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was just being selfish and lazy. I should be able to function better than this. After my depression started deepening and deepening, I started getting, um, hearing voices, actually, and I didn't know what that was. Though she eventually received a diagnosis and some therapy, she never received the consistent recovery-focused therapeutic support necessary to manage her illness. Eventually, she found herself homeless in Louisville. After I got to the homeless shelter, I couldn't believe it. Eight and a half years ago, I was homecoming queen, and now it was homeless. Thank you. I'm feeling a little stressed about the... Nelia eventually found her way to Bridgehaven, a community-based mental health recovery and rehabilitation center where she began her road to recovery. Recovery is a relatively new mental health treatment philosophy. Recovery is a journey, and recovery is just as individualized as each individual person who has mental illness. But it is a journey where the person, um, number one, comes to terms with the fact that they do have a mental illness, that it is something that most likely is going to be with them in some form for a lifetime. But once they learn about the illness, um, learn how to manage it, um, then they become empowered and they become the ones who make the decisions about their life. The illness is no longer making choices for them. You get to dream your own dreams, have your own dreams, and they help you to make those possible. Back in 2006, I got certified as a peer support specialist in the state of Kentucky. That's what yeah. mine do. That's what, so how would you call it? And I get to see my own depression lifting as I get to help other people. And I feel like maybe this was something I was called to do or made to do. You know, my other plans didn't work out, but this worked out and I feel really grateful. For me, it's been setting goals for myself and seeing myself make changes where I needed to and accepting the part of me that was just part of me and accepting my limitations. Nelia is a tremendous example of someone who is in recovery and working on recovery. Um, and she works on it every day. She has learned um, the things that she needs to do in order to keep her life manageable. When she does have symptoms, she's learned ways and implements ways to kind of manage through them so that she can get through those little bumps and go on with her life. And most of all, she has um, is using her experiences with mental illness and with recovery to help other people in their recovery journeys. I just want people to know um, that it can happen to anyone. You know, your next door neighbor, the homecoming queen, or your mom or your dad or your best friend, and be a support to them. And educate yourself about mental illness. And also, I want people to know that no matter how low you get, because I've been pretty low, trust me, there's always hope that it can always get better. So don't be afraid to get help. Don't be afraid to get counseling, to get medication. Don't let the stigma of that keep you from doing something good with your life and positive. Kelly Coffey and her son, Jay, provide a unique service to police departments in the state. 
They offer specialized training designed to help police officers respond appropriately to people with mental illness who are in crisis. Kelly has had a severe mental illness for over 25 years. When we were kids, you know, you got your mother, she, she cooks, she cleans, she takes care of you, get you up for school. And what happens is, is all that kind of goes away. She starts saying stuff that you know just isn't right. I start by not sleeping and not eating. And my family knows when I don't sleep and I don't eat for a period of time. And I start playing religious music all the time or preachers or I either get real religious or I either go the other way, you know, get real sinful. In 2005, Kelly experienced an episode which brought her into contact with the local police. I was calling 911 over again, over and over, and they said, if you call 911 and I have, we have to come back here, somebody's going to jail. And they finally come back to my house. They went in the bedroom where my husband's in the bed asleep, and they draw guns on him to take me to jail. They put me in handcuffs and took me out of there, and they put me in jail. When I found out that she had been arrested, I'm sitting there thinking, that's just going to make her worse. How's, uh, how's being in jail going to help my mother? Because, you know, I know she needs help, and it just made me feel helpless. Sadly, despite the fact that Kelly was suffering from an acute phase of her mental illness, she was forced to remain under the custody of the criminal justice system for over four months bouncing back and forth between the hospital and jail. I thought I was fighting a war here in Rockcastle County, and I, I thought my husband and my children and my nephew was in it. And um, it scared me. I mean, I was paranoid. They, they let me talk to my husband before they took me, and I kept saying, are you all right? Are you all right? Fast forward five years, Kelly is now considered in recovery. And she and Jay are now offering crisis intervention training so that her experiences won't be repeated. I tell them, you know, about me, about how when I get sick, I do things I normally wouldn't do, you know, like call 911 over and over. I've not called 911 since 2005. I think it would be really, really good uh, for the officers in whatever jurisdiction they might be in to be familiar with their mental health professionals in that area and have a good working relationship with them. I do know that, that I think there should be more training for the officers on the street uh, as to what steps, you know, that they would need to take to deal with someone who is having a mental crisis. Kelly credits much of her recovery to the Cumberland River Comprehensive Care Center, where she received therapeutic rehabilitation and to the local chapter of NAMI, or National Alliance on Mental Illness, where she is an active member. I want to welcome everyone to our NAMI Cumberland River meeting. Our topic is going to be about stigma. NAMI meetings also provide members a safe place to talk about the stigma of mental illness, the kind that perhaps contributed to Kelly Coffey being put in jail. Mental illness is a disease just like diabetes or heart trouble or anything. Untreated, it can get you in a lot of trouble. But if you reach out and get treatment, it can help you save your own life, let alone save others. You know, that medicine is a whole lot of the key, but you gotta have counseling and, and you gotta really work at it. You gotta put a lot of work into doing other things other than dwelling just on the what you've done when you were mentally ill. I'm very proud of her. You know, she does all this with uh, all these programs and projects with NAMI, and we, we've we done CIT training together. Really, It really helps her make it day to day. And even when she doesn't feel good, she still gets up and goes and pushes herself, and, and that really makes me proud. In the western part of Kentucky, Marsha and Jerry Bell, husband and wife, are also impacted by mental illness. Marsha's mother has schizophrenia, and Marsha is her primary caregiver. Uh, I had a good childhood because she didn't really get sick until I was a teenager. 
So uh, we did a lot of baking together. Uh, that's how I learned how to cook. She trusted me to prepare the meals at night. So we had good memories, especially in the kitchen. I saw that she was having symptoms when I was about around 17 years old. She was saying weird things like um, there was something clicking inside her head. Um, people were after her that we didn't know the names of these people. Uh, so that was the first time she started exhibiting signs of a mental illness. It was stressful in the beginning, but once I um, educated myself about schizophrenia and learned about the symptoms and what causes it, the brain dysfunction, um, it became easier for me. One thing about stigma is I think people are so afraid and they relate mental illness with devil, you know, and demonic type things. And I think that's one of the problems is because they don't really understand that it's an illness like any other cancer or diabetes. Even uh, from our church, uh, we went to, uh, the first thing when Portia was diagnosed with a mental illness was we're gonna have to pray the demon out of her. So we even experienced that at our own church. And uh, you know, it's just a lack of education. Hello, hello everybody. My name is Marcia Bell. Uh, my person is my mother. She's diagnosed with schizophrenia. Right now, to help educate others about mental illness and support families experiencing mental illness, Jerry and Marcia started their own NAMI chapter. For the members that come to our support group meeting, the impact is they finally find someone who's sharing their same story. It might not be identical, but it's similar, and they have someone to talk to. It's a safe haven to come and talk about what they're going through. When, when I tell people that I've, I've had cancer, it's like, oh, you know, but if I say that uh, my son is uh, schizophrenic, you know, that's like, also, he crazy. Mm -hmm. Cancer's a word everybody know, mm -hmm. you know, it can deal with. But you said schizophrenia, bipolar, stuff like that, you know, a matter of the brain. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't understand that, you know. And they think you can just lock people up and just, you know, be done with them, but... Yeah. It, it just don't work like that. Or don't talk, don't talk about it. To add to that is to separate the illness from the person. Because a lot of times family members take it personal when, there are, when their relative is going through an episode. And we try to tell them, you know, it's part of the illness. And still love that person for who they were when you knew them before the illness. The NAMI chapter holds regular walks in the community to raise awareness where we actually have relatives and people that suffer from mental illnesses that's actually at those walks as speakers and also participating in the walk. And I think when people see that, that's an impact because it said, you know, there are normal people just like everybody else and they can make a difference in the world and contribute to society as well. Despite all their work, Marsha and Jerry know there is much left to be done to erase the stigma of mental illness. In my opinion, I don't see it changing that much because I'll have people who will call and be like, I have a relative who has a mental illness and they're free to talk about it to me on the phone because they don't see me, I don't see them. But when I say, okay, we have a support group meeting second Tuesday of each month, they don't show up. So, and it's, it's like they're too embarrassed and too ashamed to seek help for themselves and for their family member. For Jerry and Marsha, mental illness has brought some positive impacts as well. I feel it made our marriage stronger because we're all we got because the family still got stigmas about mental illness so we have to be a support base for each other. So it has really greatly you know, affected our marriage in a positive way. It's affected us positively because uh, especially with the NAMI aspect we do everything together so it's not like I'm off to this meeting or I'm off to the conference and he's behind. We're going through this journey together, so it's nice.